Welcome back to the Channel Version Gamer. And uh, I just got back from watching the movie Rush and I decided, wait, there's no better time to do a video reviewing my favorite game ever. And uh, as you can see by the gameplay, or as you may not recognize by the gameplay, this is Burnout 3. It is not the best game I've ever played, The Last of Us takes that spot, but it's by far my favorite. And I absolutely love and adore every single last bit of it. And I thought, why not do some sort of review thing? Uh, no, j just for those people that like scores, here's what my score is. I'm giving this game a 1 out of 10. Now you're going to have to listen to every word I have to say. <laughs> because a number cannot express the meaning of words and how I could describe this game. Uh, as you can watch by the gameplay, this game has everything. This was made for the PS2 in 2004, one of the best years in gaming ever. Because in the same time as this game was made, I also had Flat Out 1 for the PC, and that game was also just a brilliant work of magic. And those two games kind of made my childhood, that's all I ever played, uh, with a few other additions, uh, like Rock Band later on when that game came out, and stuff like that. Uh, but until then, this was all I had, and this was more than enough. I mean, the gameplay you're watching background is the last GP you have to do. Um, the one before it is harder because it's something like a half an hour long. Uh, but this is the type of speed that you're going to get up to playing this game. It obviously doesn't start, doesn't start out this fast and it's not that difficult because this took me a whole lot of attempts to complete. And I still have not to this day 100%ed the game. There's a few uh, preview laps, which is basically like a fastest lap time thing that I have not gotten gold in. And there's a few achievements slash trophies that I haven't unlocked because they're just impossible. <laughs> uh, but out of all the things I've done, this game, it, it has absolutely everything. As you can see, by the, by the driving mechanics, it is very crash oriented. And I love that about the game. There's no other racing game that has said, it's okay to crash because we're gonna make it look beautiful. There's no, there's no other game like that. I, I mean, this was the first in a whole. Th this was. It, it just defined the arcade racing genre. There's no game that's done more to racing than this. It, 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 it graphically for the PS2, it is beautiful. Look at the lighting on the cars and everything. Look at the, the sparks against the walls. Everything is just so well done. The crash simulation, except for a few minor bugs and twitches that you know you recognize because this is PS2. It, its damage simulation is unreal. Its physics engine, holy crap. There's a few things that make the game playable, like being able to slide along barriers, uh, especially the ones with the arrows on it that kind of uh, cut off the tracks. <laughs> except for those not being realistic. This game is okay. so real. Even if you're using my strategy, which is sliding along barriers, your car will slow down like crazy. <laughs> and just the the, cra the crashes with everything, the crashes with traffic, the crashes with the cars, everything just looks so beautiful and perfect. And like the boost, the fire, everything was just so well done. And I'd, I've never had issues with this game ever. I've had many, many rage moments because races like this and preview laps like I may or may not show you are just so sweat inducing. They make you clench your teeth, they make you break your controller mashing the X button as far down as it goes. It, it, it's, it's, a, it's just so exciting. No other game I've played has gotten me so far into the game. I mean, I've put so many hours, I've put more hours into this game than I think I've put hours into something like Pokemon. And I'm being completely serious, on my save file I have 40 hours, but that's after I basically got to this exact point I had to reset because my save file got corrupted. And so I've done everything twice. But besides the whole racing and a beautiful crashing aspect, besides everything like this, and besides being able to slow-mo control time as you've crashed, <laughs> Besides this, there's also cra there's there's many other game of there's Road Rage where the focus is on taking people down, which is one of my favorite aspects of this game. No other game that I've played that involves racing has involved being able to hey, fuck you enemies, uh, like I can crash into walls now. No other game has done that. This is absolutely beautiful. I mean, th the whole concept of this was made in Burnout 2: Revenge, I think. Uh, but this game just took it a whole load further. It added special achievements for different takedowns of different objects. It added everything. <laughs> uh, 
I, I, I mean, it was absolutely a perfect, flawless masterpiece that I cannot put down. I still play it now. I came back to it a few days ago because I had some nostalgic moment. And, and I, I, I really want to try 100% this game. Even though I know that for a person like me, it's going to be almost impossible. But, but besides this whole racing thing, there's also the crash mode. And crash mode was just a, another load of fun. Uh, it's not going to be shown in the gameplay you're watching, but the whole point of it is to crash and cause as much monetary damage as possible. That was just such a ridiculously fun game mode. It's unbelievable. There's a hundred levels. A hundred levels. <laughs> and I have gold medal each and every one of them. Also, for 10 of the 100, there's headlines, which are something like double the gold medal score, and I've earned all those too. <laughs> I mean, uh, especially as soon as I got to the parts that I couldn't beat, the, this Grand Prix I couldn't beat on both my save files because I was like 8 years old. And so, uh, and when I got to that point, I just went crash mode and I just played it for days because it's just so beautiful. You go and you're crashing, you just explode everything and there's just, everything is so beautiful. <laughs> I, I cannot say enough good words about this ridiculous, ridiculous game, and I feel like it is, it's not the best, because there's a few things that I would change, but it's definitely my favorite, and the few things that I would change, the biggest, the biggest problem I had with the game is that it had to be made for the PS2, the fact that it came out so early on, the fact that this was just perfect the way it was for the PS2. It only had 480 pixels to work with, and so it, it may not be as visible if you're watching this on a small screen, but if you if you play this game, if you've played it on a big screen like I have to, I mean, I can't play this game on my PC in a tiny little 4D pixel window, I have to have the pixels expanded. And so I've played this on big PCs and on big TVs, and being able to distinguish between lights of oncoming cars, traffic lights, and your enemies, like uh, the first, second, and third things, it, it, it gets very difficult at times, and that's the thing that forces me into crashes most of the time. Especially at the speed that you're hurling at right now, there's actually a car that's faster than these, and that's the Grand Prix before this, which was even harder. It was uh, four races, and in total they were something like half an hour long, and they were on like Formula One cars. <laughs> and those are just ridiculous. I mean, especially once you get to the end of the race. Obviously it builds up to this from like the slowest little shits. Uh, to the cars that I'm racing now, obviously it builds up, but it gets abs it gets ridiculously difficult. I mean, no other game has made me sweat and clench my teeth and 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 be so into the game. Oh, <laughs> I, I mean, I, I if I wasn't making this commentary, I would just go and play it now because. Uh, so deliciously fun and so deliciously good and so unbelievably amazing uh, and so rage inducing especially when you crash into repeated traffic but it doesn't matter because even if even this game when you rage at it you want to go back and you want to go more <laughs> this isn't like the game that makes you rage and makes you want to quit this is the game that makes you want to rage and makes you want to go more do it do it again try again especially the preview laps that I will be trying to do gameplay completion of 100% race gold I have, as I said, already 100% crash gold. That's 100 crash events, all gold. Uh, I will be trying to record myself doing a 100% race completion. Uh, and uh, I only have, I think, four preview laps left. I've completed every actual race event. I just need preview laps, which is basically one lap that you cannot crash in. Uh, well, if you do, you can come back, but that's definitely going to screw up your time so much you're not going to be able to get gold either way. I mean, I, I don't think I've done a, and I don't think I've ever done a preview lap where if you crash more than once you can get gold. I think I've done it a couple times where I've crashed and got gold, but out of the ones I have left to do, I've I've attempted many of them over and over again, and with crashing they're impossible to gold. And so I'll try to make some sort of gameplay out of it. I'll try to make it this game somehow visible to people that haven't played it, uh, because you cannot buy it in stores unfortunately because it is 10 years old. Well, almost 10. I will try to showcase you the the preview lap, and I will try to showcase you different races if I'm bored and I have to make videos. Uh, and I will try to showcase you the crash mode, because that's just the thing that makes this game ridiculous. And I love it so very much, and it is my favorite, favorite game of all time. 
Um, now, I guess that I have time, I can slightly discuss other games that have come with this generation that shaped my childhood. And uh, one that I was going to compare this game to that I'm going to compare it now to, I guess, is Flat Out 1. Uh, Flat Out was another just perfect little masterpiece, I guess, uh, that didn't come just as much as perfection as this because it lacked player interaction. This game also had, um, you may not be able to hear, it depends on how I mix in the audio, how it sounds. Uh, it, you may be able to hear the voiceovers of this guy named Stryker that cuts in every now and then on the radio. Um, th that was done so perfectly because with this racing thing, you don't want some sort of dubstep wub wub in the background. You don't want some sort of dramatic music. You, you want some punk rock, fast rock music. And it was awesome because th that was the soundtrack. The soundtrack was flawless. And then the guy that came in was also, so he sounded all punk rockish and everything. And he was like this dude that had so many, he had so many lines to say. You never heard the same thing twice in something like two hours. Because every track you went to, he had something different to say. Uh, and, and, he, and he would entertain you. He, would, he kind of introduced a, a player to game interaction that is different than just... Uh, racing. You could even imagine yourself talking to this guy. Uh, that's how much he got kind of involved. <laughs> I, I mean, it, he, like, the addition of narratives with the thing that made this game have a slight edge over Flat Out because that's what Flat Out didn't have. But if Flat Out had narration, I would have a very difficult choice making a decision where, which game was better. This one was because of its narration. And the final thing that I wanted to add that I've never seen any game do as well in years is combining tracks. Each region, I think, had maybe three or four different tracks. But the reason there were so many to drive, there's something around 40. I don't have the box on me, but the box lists how many tracks there is. Be there's so many because the game found unique ways to combine them. As you see, there's crossroads everywhere and there's little yellow dots that say where to go and where you can't go. I mean yellow arrows and those are places that cut off other tracks every track is joined and so you may be you may be driving a whole different track and have this little section that I'm in right now you may have that section in a different track and that was that's such a brilliant idea it makes you inter it makes you memorize the environment better it doesn't make you say hey this is this track and that's how you do this no it makes you memorize the entire world and then figure out how you would go about connecting the tracks. It was so, so well done. Added so many opportunities. There's so many different places the, the crash modes occurred. Like you could take any intersection out of these racetracks and make a crash mode and that's exactly what this game did. I mean, it was absolutely unreal. <laughs> and I don't have enough good words about this game and if you have it, play it. If you don't have it, it's, it really sucks because you cannot buy it in stores and that's just unfortunate but this is my nostalgic moment this is my moment in which i recognize my favorite game of all time burnout 3 takedown this game is a legend now tomorrow i'm also going to have uh, the last of us dlc videos coming out because tomorrow is october the 15th and so if you're watching this and you're a subscriber then go ahead and stay because the last of us dlc i will be showcasing i think if i have time two maps uh, out of the four that are introduced uh, but if I don't, then I guess w whatever. <laughs> uh, and so yeah, so let's hope for the best. Let's see what kind of videos I can come up with. I'll definitely be playing flat out. I'll definitely be reviewing that. And I'll definitely try some other nostalgic games that bring back memories from my childhood. So yeah, thank you guys for watching this video. See you guys later and goodbye.